How's it going everyone? Ben here and today we're going to be talking about why I personally decided to switch to subcutaneous tea injections and the pros and cons of whether or not you should do intramuscular or subcutaneous tea shots. Now before I even get down to the gritty nitty details of the video, I really want to emphasize that if this is a decision that you end up making at the end of this video, definitely consider talking to your doctor about whether or not you should switch to subcutaneous or still remain um, intramuscular because your doctor knows best with your body and of course there are going to be contraindications for every kind of healthcare decision that you and your doctor personally make. I am not a trained medical professional that can tell you what you can and can't do with your body. My goal is to make sure you have access to all the medical knowledge that you have available to you so that you can make that decision with your physician. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So traditionally the standard way of injecting testosterone is through intramuscular usage. A long time ago there was oral versions of testosterone but then they, they found out that it causes significant amounts of liver toxicity. So doctors started prescribing intramuscular testosterone where you take a one inch to one and a half inch needle into preferably your thigh or other very muscular region of your body, inject it there and inject 0.5 to one milliliter a week of testosterone depending on the dosage and the specific formulation. You will inject that into your body either once or twice weekly and there you go. Your lab values will shoot up with testosterone. You'll finally have gender euphoria and you know you start your medical transition into becoming the trans person you want to be. However, in the last decade or two, subcutaneous tea injections have become very popular because a lot of research studies have been published saying that subcutaneous can be an just as effective, if not more effective on certain individuals on maintaining their serum testosterone levels. So if you are the kind of person who has been taking intramuscular testosterone for a while, what would, why would you even need to switch? Like, the intramuscular testosterone is going very well for you, so I don't see the point of why I should switch to subcutaneous. And that's kind of the methodology that I had before I started medical school, before I started learning about, you know, pros and cons of the two types of injections. And, you know, it's really hard for someone who's become comfortable with something to want to switch. So my goal right now is to tell you the pros and cons of both and the evidence-backed research on both. So first of all, intramuscular injections obviously have the most research available on its data and efficaciousness. That's because we have been doing intramuscular injections for decades. Subcutaneous is a newer methodology that we're implementing on testosterone replacement therapy, so there's not as many studies. So by that, by that train of thought, we will understand that intramuscular has more doctors that prescribe intramuscular because they're more comfortable prescribing intramuscular and that doctors feel comfortable that the side effects are not as bad compared to subcutaneous because there's not as much evidence and not even even some doctors don't even know about subcutaneous injections they've never heard of it so that comes down to access if you have a physician that's never heard of subcutaneous who is resistant to want to try subcutaneous because of the research not being as widely available and widely accepted that they might want to stick to more traditional ways of testosterone replacement therapy because it allows them to feel comfortable with their patient prescribing that to their patient. However, I do want to challenge doctors to look at new methodologies because new methodologies end up overtaking old methodologies. Even my prescriber is hesitant to prescribe subcutaneous because they are so comfortable prescribing intramuscular because it's been done for decades and a lot of people are happy with it. However, there's some things about intramuscular injections that didn't make me very happy. Some side effects that I have known about intramuscular injections that one that really made me want to change and explore a subcutaneous and here are the reasons why. First of all, intramuscular injections are really, really long. I mean, if you look at that needle, it's huge compared to a subcutaneous injection that's less than an inch. It's about half an inch to, to even lower than that, maybe even three quarters of an inch. So the needle is much, much, much shorter. So a lot of people with needle fears, I don't have a needle fear, but a lot of people with needle fears might actually prefer the subcutaneous needle because it's so much smaller, it's less daunting, and before, when I did intramuscular injections, I had to blast music, try to 
mute out my anxiety in order to even do the injection and now it's subcutaneous i just do it without any music without i do it without even without a single hesitation but even more than that because that needle is so deep the risks of you hitting something that you should be shouldn't be hitting is much higher than a subcutaneous injection where it's just under fat so the thing that i'm most worried about is some permanent nerve damage Sometimes if you misplace where you are injecting an intramuscular injection, especially if you're not medically changed, luckily I do know the areas of the body that you should be injecting, but there are many transmasculine individuals that don't, uh, don't know very well where they should be injecting because they're not given as much instructions by their caregivers. And I know that because my personal caregiver never gave me instructions on how to inject my body and that instruction was given to me by a nurse and I know because I went to med school my nurse gave me poor medical advice on how to properly inject an intramuscular needle into my body. So I know that there are providers that are not giving adequate education to their trans patients on how to safely inject in what places of their body. A lot of trans men end up getting poor education and they inject dangerous areas of the body where they shouldn't really be doing. I covered this in a video about a year ago where I saw a really alarming number of trans men on YouTube advocating for injecting into the gluteal region which is actually very very contraindicated in intramuscular injections because you can hit the superior gluteal nerve. You even put yourself at risk of hitting other nerves such as the femoral nerve and that can cause permanent pain or other complications if you hit those nerves. In addition to that, another lapse in education is that most healthcare providers don't heighten the urgency of actually rotating your injection spots every time you do an injection. And when you're not given that education, what you do is you end up injecting to the same comfortable place every single week or every other week as a transmasculine individual without knowing the consequences of consistently shooting your needle into the same area for a number of years. Eventually, you can develop scar tissue in that area of the muscle, which can cause long time pain in that area once it becomes scar tissue. And once the scar tissue develops, you can't ever reverse it. And that is a very scare, scary thought for me, even as someone who consistently rotates my intramuscular sites. Because I know even though I am rotating those sites, I am still hitting those sites every now and then. And over time, when I'm on testosterone for maybe 10, 20 years, scar tissue will form regardless. And I do not want my muscles to undergo that change. Now, if you're the kind of person who does not care about those kinds of changes, that's completely fine. And I definitely, advocate for whatever you feel comfortable with but i do want everyone who is unaware of these things to be aware of those things so subcutaneous injections have the benefit of being a shorter needle and it's not penetrating into your muscle and it's actually going into your fat you should still however rotate your sites in the subcutaneous area regardless because that's what insulin injectors do because they can develop scar tissue in their fat so you should always rotate your sites regardless of what injections you're doing I was just scared that I am less afraid of having scar tissue in my fat and more afraid of having scar tissue in my muscle because my muscles are what's doing locomotion and movement in my body. You also eliminate that scare of accidentally hitting a nerve or a major artery in your body because subcutaneous vessels are only supply the superficial layer of your skin and your fat region. So uh, the arteries are very small and there's many of them. So if you hit one, there are many other ones that can compensate for it. However, if you hit a really big artery on your leg or your shoulder, um, you can't, that artery is damaged forever. And it, it will develop scar tissue and it will recover to almost the same amount it was, but it's never quite really the same. So I definitely am, have more peace of mind knowing that I am less likely to hurt myself permanently doing subcutaneous shots. Then it comes to your T levels. There is a difference between how your T levels rise in both intramuscular and subcutaneous injections. So with intramuscular injections, you get the traditional peak and trough. So after you hit yourself with whatever cc's of testosterone, the first two days you're going to see a peak in your T levels 
and the rest of the week you're going to see a trough. This is why for many men, trans men and trans masculine individuals who do the bi-monthly T injections, they start to get more irritable near the end of their T shot cycle because their T levels are very, very, very low. Even maybe subclinical levels where you're going to be below the 400. So your T levels are going to be much lower and you're going to feel more fatigued and you're going to feel more irritable because you have that peak and trough. However, research on subcutaneous injections have shown that you have steady levels of T. So let's say you inject your whatever CCs in the beginning of the week, you're going to have almost the same levels throughout the rest of the week. So it never completely tapers and it never peaks like intramuscular injections. So there are benefits of this because you get consistent testosterone release from your fat stores into your body. And my last couple of lab values when I have been using subcutaneous, my levels have been very, very consistent to the point where I had to lower my T dosage because of the fact that my levels were so consistent to the point where it was actually going a little bit higher than uh, what my doctor really wanted me to be at. So I could lower my T dosage because of the fact that I was taking more consistent re release from my body using subcutaneous injections and it was being more efficient. So that is also another con, uh, something that's a con with subcutaneous injections. You need your levels kind of readjusted Again, your, your cc's of testosterone kind might need to get readjusted because our body synthesizes testosterone differently if it's in the muscle or if it's in the fat. So that's something to be aware of. I have read on Reddit posts that some transmasculine people, when they have changed to subcutaneous, they got, because their levels were a little, got a little weird, some of them had levels that dropped significantly to the point where they started getting cramps and Unfortunately, a small, very small number, of, um, and this is really sad, a very small number developed their menses again. So they had to have their levels adjusted to a higher range, but a, my, mine was the opposite. Mine actually had to be lowered. So that's something you should definitely think about when you're thinking of switching to subcutaneous or thinking about staying on intramuscular because your levels will might need to be adjusted in order for you to be comfortable with, that, with those T levels again. And lastly, I want to emphasize another big con with subcutaneous injections. For some people, it honestly just did not work. Their levels never got to the point where they wanted to, and even if they did, they still got some of these side effects that they weren't liking, such as cramping, which I never experienced, but that those are very valid side effects that some people can have. So when I say you should think about switching to subcutaneous, I definitely mean you should think about exploring subcutaneous as an option. However, if it's not working for you, don't be don't feel guilty, don't be sad about it. It probably just means your body is better adapted to intramuscular and that's why medicine is so beautiful and wonderful because every human body is different and we can learn from every human body and we can change research so that every human body is represented in that. So that's it for my little spiel on subcutaneous injections and why you should consider checking it out because I think it's actually really cool and I think it's the next phase of trans medicine even though we don't have a lot of trans re medical research going around. I think this is a really cool one that we need to explore more of so more people can reduce themselves from harm and obviously education is very important. I will talk about that in a, another video but thank you so much for watching. This is Ben and I'll see you on the next one.